97.1. Sully, you said you had an update, and I'm very interested to hear this. And again, it's another example to me of Michigan basketball getting disrespected here. Uh, but this time, this is national, not a local issue. Right. CSPN. Oh, BSPN. Got Your it. Your favorite, yeah. Yeah, great, great organization. Max Kellerman, really well read. Really, oh. <laughs> really refined takes on first take. Well, that take was just insane. But uh, no, ESPN, they posted a reseeding of that this. show is a typhoon of excrement. Well, it's just it's just a bunch of hot takes. Wow. Sorry, carry on. And we can play that audio too. If no, you no. Um, uh, I don't need to hear anything from that dim individual. I was very uh, troubled. I guess is the right word by that take that he had. Carry on. But ESPN posted a list. They reseeded the Sweet 16 right now. And I click on it, and I'm kind of expecting, okay, maybe Michigan's 8th, ninth, you know, somewhere in the middle, 7th maybe. And I click on it, and they have Michigan 15th out of the 16. Come on. 15th, right behind Loyola. The last month of the year, they were amongst the four or five hottest teams in America. They dominated the Big Ten tournament. Now, they didn't come out and play amazing basketball opening night. Montana, that game was a snooze. Montana was awful. The Houston game, part of Michigan's problem is Houston's really, really good. Rob Gray and, and Corey Davis Jr., those are really good players. And Houston's going to guard, and they're a challenge, right? But Michigan hit the shot to launch them into the next round. They did what they needed to do. How the hell do you mean to tell me that U of M is 15 out of the remaining 16 teams? You know what? Take your garbage article and shove it. That's outrageous to me, and I hate that school. Would you like the description or not? Yes. Jordan, okay, here we go. 15, Michigan, reseed, number four. Who's 16? Sister Jean? K-State is, is 16. They say they reseed Michigan out of four. Previous, obviously, is the three. Wait a minute. They, they put Loyola ahead of Michigan. Loyola's 14th, yeah. Okay, you know what? I'm done reading. <laughs> Loyola's a beautiful story. I'm tired of Sister Jean. Somebody wheel her out of here. Enough. Not every team needs a super fan that we get saturated with. Yeah. It was a cute story. Oh, my God, look at this old lady cheering on Loyola. Then you find, ah, she's a nun. Maron, enough. I don't need any more interviews with Sister Jean. I don't want to see Sister Jean. I don't want to hear from Sister Jean. I don't want to hear from a list that's got Loyola ahead of U of M in the remaining 16 teams. That's ridiculous to me. But you may continue. Well, basically, I don't even have to read these couple paragraphs because basically the only reason they're using is that Michigan survived and, uh, you know, they didn't play a very good game and they got saved by Jordan Poole. That's ba essentially what they're saying. Uh, that's disrespectful. Whatever. Mike, I listen to your show all the time. Big U of M Hoops fan. Coach B also thanks the fans at the games all of the time. Yeah, even though you can't fill your own barn. Right? I mean, you know, that must be me imagining things. Or wait, knowing people who have season tickets who complain about empty seats. Congratulations. I'll continue. Can you talk about the matchup on Thursday and what M needs to do other than get Wagner involved? Thanks. Sure. And your quotations are not necessary in passive-aggressive. Um, A, your guards, including Xavier Simpson, you better get up and be ready for TJ Starks. Young man can ball. Gildan, the other guard they have. They're playing pretty damn good ball, and that's where it all begins and ends. Now, the second thing with Wagner, it's two-way two street here. Defensively, you got to keep this kid out of foul trouble because uh, Tyler Numnuts, uh, 44 to big. a ms bigs are playing out outrageous. And Wagner can't get caught up in that. Offensively, that's where he's got to be the aggressor. Get him out on the perimeter. Have him attack. I mean, the games where Wagner plays the best, it's a mix of inside out. And when he gets his confidence going and gets some swag, it's big time. And the other thing to me, it's underutilized, but like I, I love when Ab Muhammad Ali, Abdul, Rahman, uh, Esquire the Third, when he gets the ball, little ISO, he's just got, he's got game. Like for the last couple of years, we've always talked about it. He's got a little bit of Rucker Park. He could take a guy one-on-one, -on -one, middle of the lane, and create a shot out of nothing. And I like that. Late shot clock. He can also get guys in foul trouble. But it, 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 the recipe for Michigan to me is always the same. Don't turn it over. They don't. Play great team defense. Communicate. They do. But A&M, the way they beat North Carolina, gives you some pause. I thought you'd beat North Carolina. I never would have picked you to beat them by 20. 
Now, maybe A&M kind of is going to bounce, so to speak. Maybe they gave you an unbelievable performance. They'll never be able to duplicate it. Michigan clearly has to play better, but better get on their guards. And when A&M's bigs get rolling, their activity is at a different level than really any bigs you're going to see in the Big Ten. I mean, Michigan State's are always in foul trouble. Isaac Haas is Ivan Drago, the robot version. There's really no bigs like that in this conference. A&M's, they're long, they're active, they're athletic. I'll I'll tell you one thing. Get out of the way if they go to the rim with something. I can't wait to see it. I'm very excited about it. And now that my team threw themselves in a wood chipper, I have even more time to watch. So it's very exciting. Uh, Diehard Michigan fan here, but some of these calls and texts from other fans make me ashamed. That's from Chad. Uh, We've gone all in on Blake, so the only option, Trey Drummond. Um, Michigan alum and basketball fan here. A few things. We do have a fan base. It's just much smaller than our football base. It's silly to expect it to be big as one of the largest fan bases in the world. But more importantly, nobody wants to talk to you about it because there's nothing to argue. Well, the problem is there's nothing to argue about football, and you still flock to me. This is a team that wins. You know what's fun? I don't even give a damn if you talk trash. See, I think that's the maybe the biggest problem in all this. You really can't do anything to me because I trash my own program. So you don't have a bullet in the chamber. I'm not a homer. I don't sit here and disrespect Beeline. I don't sit here and disrespect this team. I did it once in January. I owned up to it, and I paid for it. But other than that, yeah, maybe you're right. The other problem is if you don't watch games, you really can't call in and say anything. I mean, I have no problem. You want to call in and go, hey, Sparty blows. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> what? You're not going to get an argument from me. Sully, you, I thought you were going to add something there. I no, apologize. It just, it, this always happens when arguing between the two fan bases always happens, and it just turns into people criticizing one but, fan base for being bigger than the other. But it's, it's, it's not it's, a it's, comparison it's, but, of size. It's that I do not understand how any topic in this city, whether it's Red Wings, Pistons, Michigan State, anything, Michigan football, Lions, whatever it is, get a better response than Michigan basketball. I have said for years this is an atrocious college basketball city. That's not crazy. Like, Michigan has plenty of games. There are empty seats at Chrysler, okay? That's not right. Not asking for 80000 right? Not even asking for 20 something like the Dean Dome. I just don't think people pay enough attention to John Beeline. But I'm the bad guy? <laughs> Kiss no, my ass. Football is always going to be the alpha at Michigan. People just – Great. A lot of people just seem to focus on that. Good. Keep flocking to mediocrity. Right. Congratulations. I, I, I may. I think I wish Beeline would get more credit. I think the guy's been fantastic at Michigan. Beeline is a distinct problem. Tell you what, he owns Tom right now. Tom can't figure it out. And he just goes about his business. Quietly. He, I bet you he likes that he's just behind the scenes. I think that in Harbaugh that sense takes he's got a good attention. setup. But listen, luckily for Michigan fans, they're at no risk of losing the dude. He's, he's too old to sit there and take off. But I'll tell you one thing. If he was a bit younger, he'd be gone. Yeah. Gone. And he's been putting together. He'd some... go somewhere where he's appreciated. He'd go somewhere. And I, I, I'm i telling you, Beeline is a fantastic coach. He has some real nice recruiting classes coming up, too. He's been recruiting great, probably better than he ever has right now as well. Oh, what has he got coming in? Let's hear about it. Break it down. I think he's got a couple top 100 players in uh, 2019. He starts to come, and then he pulls out. But the next two classes they keep talking about as being very, very good, some of the best classes Beeline's ever had. Well, if he's going to start bringing in better players, the rest of the Big Ten is going to be in some trouble. It's just as, it's as clear as it gets. You give him better players, his track record, I mean, he's had, what, six first-round picks? Think about it. Trey Burke wasn't some all-star. Trey Burke was a three-star kid out of Columbus. I think he was a Penn State recruit. Columbus, right? Right. The big one was Mitch McGarry. Tim Hardaway Jr. was a, f- a fairly highly recruited kid, too. But my point is, overall, he doesn't get some massive Kentucky-type, UNC-type, Duke-type, or even Michigan State-type class. If Beeline starts getting better players, look the hell out. And as a Spartan, that's a very scary proposition. But I'm a bad guy. 97 one. All right, guys. Well, did you know that studies show that skipping cigarettes when you normally smoke them, it really does help you prepare to quit for good. So- 